I'm here to discuss some of uh, the repeatable innovation processes that the young entrepreneurs in Africa can use to make sure that their ideas are not only useful and usable, but they're viable and they can make a difference. At this workshop, we are privileged to work with the doers and makers here in Africa, uh, entrepreneurs who are going to be making change. And we're equipping them uh, greatly to be focusing on problems that matter. Most entrepreneurs fail, 95% of ventures fail. Uh, and the primary reason for failure, whether it's launch products from corporations or it's entrepreneurial ventures, the main reason is the market doesn't really need what they're working on. And I think fundamentally, we're giving the, the participants skills, tools, methods to identify what's needed and in the form that it's needed. They might understand a basic need, but exactly how you execute can make or break the solution. Coming here, my expectation is to learn, to get a network, to learn from the other participants, to learn from the, the teachers. And this is what I'm getting here because like yesterday, we talked about how to meet the needs of the users. And our teacher teach us that the users must be the centers of our product. So coming in Kigali for the product innovation workshop, it was a great opportunity for me because I know that I will learn about innovation. I will learn about how to manage people, how to meet the, the real needs of the youth in my country and to meet their need and to give them the real product they need for my country. This week we covered three major methods for human-centered design that the participants practiced in the field. We talked about how you frame an opportunity as a how might we. And how might we is targeted so that um, it keeps in mind the person whose problem you're solving for. So how might we is a technique we used. We also covered user interviews, how you go out in the field and you just talk to people about what their problems and needs are, bring that information back, and use a technique called affinity diagramming to make sense of the data that you've collected, and then the power of direct observation in the context of the problem. So it's one thing for us to sit in this beautiful building and talk about bus stops, and another for the participants to go out to the actual bus stops twice and experience what it's like to be there. Field books are really important, not only because of interviews, because we could observe their struggles, like how they are just crowding the, just the door to enter, how the bus would arrive already full and there is already a queue. Without even talking to them, you can easily observe and their frustrations going there, not entering, coming back. You could see the sun really disturbing them, no shelter, nowhere to sit. You could see everything just by observing. When you're working on a product and you have a deadline that you have to uh, submit to or you have uh, some bugs that you, uh, that you have to fix, you tend to uh, forget going to your users and researching and doing that iterative process. So uh, this will be a reminder for me. Opportunities is our mission. If whatever we do doesn't lead to opportunities for young people, we don't do it. One of the opportunities is the one that we have experienced this week, the opportunity to connect and learn. The moment we got into this room, we immediately connected. It was just a conversation. What do you guys do? So they were telling us what they do. So the connections again as are really very uh, important in making sure that uh, we solve problems. So I believe the, 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 the effort of actually bringing all of these African entrepreneurs under one roof with this great diversity and the diversity not only within their nationalities, but actually within what they actually do. So you would have different industries in the room inspiring one another. So imagine getting all of this diversity onto one team and provide them with the proper knowledge uh, uh, that they would need and put them in a team to practice a solution this automatically would increase the odds of you having something that is successful and ready to kick off. I just learned that uh, the best product is the product that you build with your stakeholders. Uh, sometimes I could neglect to know like what they really want, but the best approach that I've, that's the thing that I took away from this uh, product innovation workshop is to 
just get close to them and understand more of their pain points that could discover much more opportunities than I could imagine. Our system is called Kupanga Ijihe. So that word, it is a bus scheduling system. At the back of our mind, we want to solve a problem that best fits the population of Rwanda. We went through a lot of research this week and we found out so many things about how uh, Rwanda as a country works and functions in terms of the opportunity that exists in making and improving the transport er area in uh, Uganda. With these challenges and their implications, our opportunity lies in how we might improve accessibility and convenience to passengers with different types. We're talking about the regular passengers and we're talking about the special needs. And this is our solution. I have learned a lot, that's the truth. And uh, I am going to replicate exactly what we've done here. I am a startup founder and we've always been told, move with speed, move with speed. Everybody expects you to take this out, test this out quickly, fail fast, fail forward. So what this workshop has told me is really take your time, fall in love with the problem and speak to the people who actually need your solution. So the thing is breathe, okay? That's what I've learned. Breathe, take time to understand what you're solving and whom you're solving for. So one thing I've learned that I will be able to incorporate into my business at Daftari is the innovation process. So actually going back and forth and capturing the, the users, the end users' ideas and their solutions and understanding their problems completely before putting out your original idea because at the end of the day you're building something that is for the end users. So understanding how that process is from I know the, the, the end users to now bringing that information and that data all the way into building a product that makes sense for us to put out there and a problem and building a product that actually solves the problem from the end users. So I will bring into Daftari the innovation, the creative thinking and how to put ideas together from end to end. The things that you do, if they are not known appropriately, right, sometimes they don't go far. Let's invest in the networks and the tools that we have to amplify the messages of what we are doing and to show people possibilities. There is someone in your position who doesn't know that this thing exists. There's actually people who come together to share ideas. They are stuck on something. They might actually get inspired by your story. Hopefully this is what this workshop has focused on not only the product, but how the product changes people's lives, how the product resonates. Why would someone take a franc or thousands of francs or millions of francs and invest it into what you've created? Thank you for uh, participating. Hopefully this is just the beginning of a long lasting collaboration uh, that lasts way beyond this workshop. So again, thank you very much for attending and let's give a thanks again for the organizers.